Hi, Cat's Cradle here. A few weeks ago, we had an auxiliary refrigerator go out on us. And one of the few things I was able to save were some packages of shredded cheese. Now, we think we caught the refrigerator just a day or so, maybe a couple of days after it, it went out. And in my mind, I remember back when I was a child going in old country stores, and they would have a wheel of cheese sitting on a old wooden butcher block. And that cheese would sit there for many days, not being refrigerated at all. And so I'm thinking that my cheese that's packaged and sealed up well in a relatively cool place, uh, even though it wasn't refrigerated, it's certainly winter and fairly cool, I thought it'd probably be safe to use. Anyway, I have a lot of it that I need to use. And one of the best uses of cheese, in my opinion, is quiche. And so I'm going to show you how to make what I consider the perfect quiche. For many people, the word quiche strikes fear in their heart. They think of it as some fancy French cuisine. Well, it's not very fancy. It's just very delicious. It takes a few simple basic ingredients and a little know-how to pull it off well. Now, I've got to tell you ahead of time that if you like quiche that tastes like firm scrambled egg, you will not like this recipe. If you like a quiche that is soft and custardy and velvety and cheesy, this will be the one for you. It does not at all taste very eggy. So if that sounds good to you, follow along as I make this very simple but delicious dish. This uh, video will not be about how to make pie crust. We can do that at another time. You can see that I've already got my pie crust made. It's in the shell. I have some delicious bacon that Prepare, uh, my 13-year-old daughter, has cooked perfectly. And you will see how perfectly in a minute when I crumble it up. So really, cheese, bacon, milk, eggs, those are the main ingredients. So let's start putting this together. The only equipment you will need is your pie plate, a medium mixing bowl, a measuring cup perhaps, and a small whisk. So I'm going to measure about five cups of cheese. I have never measured it before, but since I have to give you a recipe, I'm doing it here. So I'm using a mix of cheeses. Some of it is Swiss, some of it is an Italian blend. And then for uh, color and depth of flavor, I'm going to add a cup of cheddar here. You can use a variety of cheeses here. I've used Parmesan. I've used mostly Swiss sometimes. Uh, cheddar, of course, is wonderful. Monterey Jack will work. Uh, Jalapeno Monterey Jack will work. And you can see the bacon is just crumbling in so nicely. My 13-year-old daughter, uh, she is she is the bacon cooker in the family, and she can cook it to perfection where it just crumbles right when you break it apart. So this is about four large slices of bacon just crumbled directly on top of the cheese. I don't like to put much more than that because bacon has a very strong smoky flavor, and if you put too much, it will overpower the delicate flavor of the custard. So I just toss it all together with my hands there. And here I'm adding about two teaspoons of all-purpose flour. I do that for two reasons. One, it lightly coats the cheese and bacon, which allows them to remain suspended in the custard rather than sinking to the bottom of the pie shell. And the other reason is that it serves as a slight thickening agent. So into the pie shell they go, and I spread them around evenly. And you'll see that they just about, uh, by about two-thirds, fill up the pie shell. All right, that looks good. Let's make the custard. I'm going to start with two fresh eggs. They're about medium eggs. Okay, and the second one.
And then I'm going to add a can of evaporated milk. And this milk is from December of 2010. It's a little darker than if it would be brand new. And you will see the fatter part of the milk has come to the top and it will kind of plop out there. And then the thinner milk is on the bottom. It has taken on a richer flavor and a, a uh, more intense color, but this milk is absolutely delicious. I've got to be honest that I hang on to canned milk longer than most of my other canned goods because I like the flavor better as it gets a little older. I think it's a, a more rich tasting milk. So let's go ahead and add some seasonings. This is a little celery salt. If you don't have celery salt, regular salt will do. I just like the flavor that the celery imparts. Here's a little bit of crushed red pepper, mostly because I don't like to see black specks floating around in my quiche. Parsley flakes, it adds a little bit of brightness, both in flavor and in color. The parsley flakes will fo float to the top, so they'll be re real obvious. Here is some of my own onion powder. It has a delicious sweet flavor. And then just a splash of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce goes delicious. I mean, it tastes delicious with uh, both the eggs and the bacon. And then with a small whisk, I just poke the yolks of the eggs to break them up. And then just whisk it together until I'm certain that it's all combined and that I have thoroughly broken up the eggs. And then I'm going to add about a cup and a half of whole milk. If you don't have whole milk, 2% will do fine. I wouldn't use skim particularly. That's just to tone down just slightly the richness of the evaporated milk. Uh, most people will use half and half in their quiche and I have just found over the years and I have experimented many years I was making quiche long before it became popular I have, I have found that it's just not necessary that the canned milk will add a richness to the quiche uh, that keeps you from having to buy the more expensive half and half now you just pour the custard over the cheese and bacon trying to dampen dampen all of it covering the bacon and the cheese. I've made this so many times that I know exactly how much custard it takes to fill my pie shell. A lot of people will use more eggs than this, more eggs than two, but I I just don't I don't like it to taste like scrambled eggs and this does not. It's very creamy. All right, initially it goes into a 375 degree oven. If you have never done this before and you don't know how your your uh, filling is going to react, I really recommend you bake it on a uh, baking sheet just in case it were to to um, to boil over the edges. I know exactly how how mine's going to react, so I don't I don't need to do that. You have to be very careful putting in that hot oven, especially if you've really filled it to uh, to the top. So I'm going to cook it at 375 for about 15 minutes. Uh, then I come back after 15 minutes and turn my oven down to 350 and I put a little shield over the pie crust usually. If you have a commercial uh, shield, this a circle that will sit on your pie crust, that's all well and good. If you don't uh, know how to make a little uh, disposable one with aluminum foil. I'll show you in a video tomorrow how to do that. So this is how it looks when it comes out. It jiggles, but it's not sloshing. A knife inserted in the center comes out clean. Because it has to cook for uh, an hour, at least an hour, you run the risk of burning your pie crust. So I like to cover it and protect it and so then it comes out looking like this. It's just perfect. Quiche should um, ideally be served just slightly warmer than room temperature. It's going to take about an hour, 
are actually an hour and 15 minutes since I used this really thick pie plate for my quiche to cool down to where it's just the perfect temperature. Here's how it looks. It comes out looking kind of souffle and then after it's set there for about an hour then it, it uh, little small cracks like this form and it deflates just slightly. The surface blisters just a little uh, which makes it taste just delicious. So here I'm going to slice into it and this is one of the advantages to waiting an hour is that it's easier, it's much easier to get out of the pie plate and it holds together much better. If I were to serve this straight out of the oven, I run the risk of the custard not keeping its shape but running across the plate. Look at the color on this quiche. It slices so nicely. I'm going to let Prepare try it for you. Oh, delicious. That's really good. Oh, it's so warm and creamy. Mm. So good. I, I've always loved your quiche. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Well, there you have it. I just can't say enough about this recipe. This quiche will serve my family for two meals. We eat half of it one night and then uh, later in the week usually uh, we wait a day and then the day after we have it again. We love it. It's delicious. I think it's even better reheated and it just stores so well in the refrigerator. Be sure to store it uh, in an airtight container. I just cover this with uh, saran wrap and then again with foil on top of the saran wrap. It is a beautiful thing. This is a recipe I have made for over 30 years. I recommend it to you with great confidence. I have eaten at some of the supposed best quiche restaurants in the country. There was one very memorable one. I don't think the restaurant is still in existence. It was in Houston, Texas, and the name of the restaurant was La Quiche, and um, their pie was actually uh, so inferior to the one I could make in my own home that I scribbled my recipe on a napkin and sent it uh, to the kitchen to the chef. I hope he took my advice and tried it and I hope you will too. It really is just as easy as it looks when you saw me uh, do it just now. I hope you'll give it a try. Let me know what you think and until next time this is Cat's Cradle.